not to fall off the stage. <laughs> Good morning. I was going to say buenos dias. Is my Mexican friends here? No. <laughs> Good morning. Thanks, Gloria. Um, I, first, I want to announce, uh, introduce the missions team. So we, it's um, Gloria and James and Brett and Janet and Lonnie and Bill as part of our team. I also wanted to start by giving you uh, a CBM Active in Mission update. Remember we did that a few weeks ago for that one week. It was an initiative through Canadian Baptist Ministries to um, take steps to end hunger locally and globally. So we gave CBM $615, which was great. And they are at, right now at $64,000 of a $100,000 goal. And it's till the end of summer. So, so we have a few pictures I can show you because remember I said send your pictures to share. So um, here they're, I'm sure. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that one, David. <laughs> That's awesome. That's it, right? Yes, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for all that you did to help with that. Now to start my presentation, I have a video to show um, that we did. Uh, we had a fundraising dinner in the spring, and this was the video that was shown.
Okanagan Gleaners thanks you for your continued support. To answer the question, what does tomorrow bring? A complete, new, efficient warehouse. The crew from Three Bar Construction of Oliver has been on site every day to make this project happen. New level floors with high side walls to store barrels of dehydrated vegetables. Open spaces to operate a forklift in storing and loading out of packaged food destined for countries around the world like Ukraine, Haiti, Cuba, Burundi, Iswatini, and of course when our partner calls northern communities along Canada's Arctic Ocean. Gleaners ask for your continued support as we finish off the fundraising for this project. For as little as $100, you can contribute a square foot to this project. So let's reveal the newest addition at Okanagan Gleaners, 5,000 square feet of warehouse space, reducing our carbon footprint by eliminating unnecessary trips to outside storage depots, providing a safe forklift surface, eliminating ramps. There's still time to make your donation. talk a little bit about the gleaners and some of it might duplicate what you heard but that's okay <laughs> um, so the, the main the gleaners exist to transform products that might otherwise be wasted into nourishment for the millions of the world's hungry so the gleaners developed a mission of feeding the hungry of the world in Jesus's name so the society was founded in the autumn of 1994 which is next year's gonna be 30 year anniversary by a small group of Christian believers who, um, out of a growing concern for the hungry people of the world. So many people joined the society. A local orchardist offered a small acreage with an old 1920s tobacco drawing barn, and it's still there. Soon this building was painted and renovated into a food processing plant. Production started in July of 1996. There are currently 836 members of Gleaners. You too can join the Gleaners for $10 for a lifetime membership. <laughs> so with that, you can get emails and newsletters um, four times a year. And, um, and uh, to be a member, it's a Christian organization, right? So we, uh, the Apostles Creed was adopted as the doctrinal guide for the, for the society. And when you become a member, we ask for church affiliation. Although any volunteers that come to Gleaners are not asked if they're Christians. So that's a big thing that we hear that from other people. So no, you can come volunteer. We will take anybody, so come volunteer. We do do um, at coffee time, uh, Greg does a little story and he does a prayer. Uh, but, and you can see, praise God around, but that's, but you know, we don't push it. What, that's the way it is. Um, we have a wonderful dedicated staff. We have Greg Mason, Masson, Masson, you heard him on the video, and a couple, Eddie and me from Sri Lanka actually, but they're, try, they're getting their Canadian citizenships. We also have a really good board of directors. I'm on the board, I'm uh, vice president this year and head of promotions. And Les Clark is still doing our newsletter. So um, the soup make, making process, Just I was going to I brought some uh, bags of soup, I'll just, uh, just so you can pass around so you can see what it looks like. And this, if you haven't seen it, because a lot of times they get it packaged up and then boxed so nobody sees the soup. So just pass it around from. So 
So basically, we get imperfect vegetables that are donated by farmers. Um, potatoes, peppers, tomatoes, cauliflower, beets, carrots. We interested in get our onions because there's nobody in BC that grows onions in that quantity. So we get them from Walla Walla, Washington. And it's been a bit of a hassle getting them over the border, but <laughs> we get them over the border. Um, volunteers come every day from Monday to Friday, 8.30 to noon. So, so you basically when you come, you cut off the bad part of the um, vegetable and then you cut it a little smaller and then it goes through a dicer and, and then they make it about this size. And then they're spread out on Teflon coated trays. Um, we, then they go into a dryer. We have a dryer that holds 21 racks and in summertime when it's really busy, we can do two dryers full. Somebody goes in in the evening and swaps out the Miretti because they live actually on site too. They take out the dryer and they put in the more. So in the summer, we can do 900 trays a day. So that's a lot of vegetables. The next day, the dried product is removed and scraped from the Teflon sheets into a large labeled bin. And then we just start the whole process again. Um, twice a year, we do mixing. So um, that's that's quite a production. So we have all these barrels of all the different vegetables. So every soup mix is going to be different. So depending on what we have, we add barley and split peas and lentils just to make it more nutritious. And those come actually from Northern Alberta and Saskatchewan. So those big silos you saw in the, in the video, those, that's what holds the peas or lentils. And so um, they decide ahead of time how much is going to go in a bag. They know, and they have cups. So th on mixing, those two mixing weeks, we need 60 volunteers a day to, to do the mixing. So they have a, a bit of an assembly line with these yellow buckets. So basically you, you dot dip and they, you push it and it goes around the line. Then somebody seals the bag and then somebody um, boxes them and then they put them in big boxes and then onto pallets. So um, one of those bags will, feel, will feed 100 people. Um, we, at mixing time, we make over 5 million servings, so, um, which is 50,000 bags, which is 5,000 bags every day. So that's a lot of, uh, <laughs> your wrist is very sore by the end of the day. It's, uh, mixing is actually a longer day. We go from 9 till 2.30 or 3 with a break for lunch. Uh, but now we have these, the new um, the building we saw to store it all. So where does this, all this soup go? In 2022, it went to Angola, Belize, Burundi, Costa Rica, Cuba, El Salvador, Eswatini, Guatemala, Haiti, Jamaica, Lesotho, Pakistan, Sierra Leone, and we, and we sent five shipments to Ukraine. That might include this year's too. But five shipping totals have gone to Ukraine. And like he, uh, Greg said, a few years ago, they went up to northern Can Canada to a new Vic area. It was funny, though, they kind of said, they, can we send just, they wanted only the potatoes, but we don't do it in the individual ve vegetables. So, so that was their request anyways. I don't know about the soup, but we'll, we'll take some potatoes. So we'll see. <laughs> and the groups that take the vegetables, they're the ones that pay for it. So, so they pay for the delivery. Um, so they have to be a reputable, of course, uh, uh, company with boots on the ground on the other end so we know what's going on, right? And most of them are Christian. Um, and when, right now, a few years ago, uh, there was probably not enough people shipping or whatever. We were having a hard time selling. Well, now we've got our whole year is, is already, at, uh, people have already stepped up and saying they want it. So um, we've got more orders than soup right now, and I'm sure it's the same all over. There. There's also a gleaners in north, north Ver, around Vernon, and there's one down at the coast too. So I'm sure they all have the same problems. We also send some stuff with Canadian Food for the Children, Barb's Group, they get soup too to go when they have a shipment. So since the beginning of uh, gleaners, they've sent it to actually 55 different countries. Uh, the process for the soup, is you soak it in 25 liters of water overnight. And then in the morning you add extras. Uh, if you have meat, you, have, you know, the countries are all different, right? So whatever they want for spices, or if they have any more fresh veggies, maybe if they have any meat, they can throw some meat in. And then you have to cook it for another 20 minutes. And, and, and like I said, and then you'll get 100 servings, 100 cups out of that uh, bag. So, um, 
Um, has anybody here volunteered down at Gleaners? Can I have a show of hands? Yeah, there's quite a few, yes. So um, uh, I encourage you to come down. You don't have to sign up ahead of time. Just show up down at Oliver. It's at the end of Oliver towards the Suez. There's a sign on the road. It's, it's on, on, the, my, on um, the, our website, how to get there. Uh, basically every morning from 8.30 to noonish. Right now it's busy. Uh, volunteers come from all over. And recently there were people there from Saskatoon, Abbotsford, Surrey, North Van, Oliver, Sirius, Penticton, Calgary, Vanderhoof, Winnipeg. I know somebody was coming from Prince George. They come every year. Wenatchee and points in between. We also have a cool setup. There's 12 RV sites and a campground. So you can come stay. Those you have to pre-book. And you can stay and um, help in the morning. You stay for a minimal fee. And help in the morning. And then you can have the afternoon off to enjoy the Okanagan. So that works out really well. So right now... Um, the campsite's full and the um, campground we had a cancellation because church groups come from all over which is really kids cool so the kids come and they camp there and work and then do whatever they're going to do in the afternoon go to the beach whatever so it's great it's really nice to see all these returning youth groups and um, camping groups um, so uh, just another note about this facility storage facility that was amazing. God worked so well. Amazing in that. I was just saying the other day to the board, last year in March, March of 2022, we decided to move forward in faith that we're going to build this 50 by 100 storage facility for $350,000, and we had no money. <laughs> so we thought, well, let's just do it and see what happens, right? Well, we had some money, but not for such a big project, right? And God so much provided. So the facility was needed because we had all our product in sea cans on site and also all over all over a different like wineries people were holding the the stuff for us right so um it was all over the place so um after so at the beginning the donations come and mostly from the members the 835 members there you know they're the ones that are our, our backbone they're the prayer people they're the monthly givers that keep us going right but then we had a celebration dinner in may and we had some recent media attention. I don't know if you saw the story on Global News, and then there was a, a Castanet did a story. I did a, a letter to the editor, and um, a, lots of donations came in, which was awesome. So right now, we're at 210,000, which is amazing, and a year and a, and a little bit. And then we had an anonymous donor stepped up at the beginning of the summer that um, said he would match donations 50-50 for the summer up to, until September 8th up to $50,000 which was amazing so that fund right now is at 36,000 so so praise the Lord so there's still time to donate if you want to because it's, uh, it's getting matched and um, we we feel quite confident we'll have that building paid off by um, by the fall which is amazing <laughs> um, so um, I just thanks for listening uh, continue praying and helping financially or in person check out our website is okanagangleaners.com I brought some of these cards they're on the back table so it's just with the website and uh, some information if you want to um, come down or help financially so at our spring dinner our guest speaker was Laura she was in there a little bit she came from from shelters international as the group and she had just returned two days before our dinner from the Ukraine. And, um, and she was right on the front line and um, distributing stuff. So by the time, she, we kept, I kept saying, are you sure you wanna come like two days later? And she, oh no, no, I'll be there. But, but um, she was still jet lagged and she hadn't been debriefed, so she was pretty quiet, which you can understand totally. But the, the thing she said most was um, that these, there's mostly seniors that she saw that hadn't really been helped. She said they got uh, granola bars and water, but they were just so thrilled to get this soup mix, right? And she said, had a comment that seniors, because most, a lot of the people that can volunteer are seniors, that the seniors were helping the seniors. So, so that was uh, that was very powerful. But she had a, a video at the dinner, so I'm going to show that right now.
that makes me cry. Um, Laura's there right now, again. She took another lotus suit back, so she's there now posting. Yeah, Facebook friend has so she's posting. I think she's just leaving, so. Now my friend Diane McDonald's gonna update you on our, Ukraine, our Ukrainian friends. <laughs> Some of them are here that are, are living here, so. that I shared with all of you was Mission Sunday, September 2022. And I told you news that many of us saw on the TV on February 24th of that year. The pictures of the moms, the children, the seniors, all with their suitcases packed, traveling to get away from the bombs that were landing on their cities. This news affected me so much that I could no longer watch. I felt I had to do something. I prayed for the Lord to show me how could I help. I thought, I have two spare bedrooms. Maybe I could take a mom or one child or two. So I prayed for just the right family, and then I waited. I got all my approvals in place to host the Ukrainian family, and then I waited some more. One day while I was doing my devotionals, I understood that I was telling the Lord who to send to me. Once I realized that I was controlling my prayers, I needed to surrender. I said, sorry, Lord, you bring whomever you want to my home. Not my will, but yours. Not long after that, I had a dream that woke me in the middle of the night and it was very strange. It was about two sisters and then it was gone. And then I thought nothing more about it. Meanwhile, back in Ukraine, the bombs continued to fall. More time went by and then Kelowna Stands with Ukraine, a volunteer organization helping Ukrainians coming to the Okanagan, called me to say they had two sisters. I immediately remembered my dream. Hmm. I was ready to say yes right then and there. And then they said, and four kids, teenagers. Oh, my heart sank. <gasps> and then I took a big, deep breath and said, if this is your will, Lord, let them come. Megan, can you show us our picture? I received pictures from the airport in Budapest. Hungry, with everyone sleeping on chairs in the airport, with their luggage all around them, and my heart went out to them. I texted and told them what I had to offer, and they accepted. My family was finally coming. Oh, not one family, two families. My daughter, her husband, and I met them in West Kelowna. Climbing off the bus, they looked exhausted after their four-day journey. We loaded up their luggage, and the three boys, they hopped in my son-in-law's truck, and they took off into the night, heading to Penticton. The two moms, their daughter, and I stood in the parking lot and watched as they drove away. I thought, how trusting were those moms? There were their kids going off in a truck in a strange country with people they had just met. After we got home, they all fell into the beds and were quickly asleep. I went into my room, overcome with emotion, and I prayed, how am I going to feed and clothe them all? I'm not equipped for this. And a thought leapt into my head. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Once again, I needed to surrender and trust God would provide. Megan? It took a couple of days for us to get acquainted, especially learning how to pronounce all of their names correctly. And I even found out that they weren't sisters, they were cousins. But God knew. Each day they became more relaxed. I listened to their stories about living in bomb shelters. 
hearing the sirens at all hours and looking at pictures of the destruction of their beautiful cities. Their schools were closed, their stores and businesses, none of them were open. The mums got their visas and papers in order just in case they had to leave. When the bombs hit an apartment block up the street from them, it was time to go. They had to get their kids to safety. Everyone squished into one car, luggage and all, and set out on a journey, trusting God would lead them safely away from their beloved country to an unknown country called Canada on the other side of the world. All my prayers continued constantly. Lord, help me to trust that you will provide. We set up dealing with immigration, government forms, registering in schools. We got in touch with the Salvation Army for food hampers and with the Ukrainian church in Kelowna, where we found out that Father Pavlo came to Penticton every Saturday for a service in their own language. Oh, where they were welcomed with open arms. Megan? And as the prayer requests were said, I don't know if you could see this one very well. We needed another bed. We needed help with driving. Whatever the request, people came forward. Balfen provided. The kids needed winter boots. Pastor Carl from Seventh-day Adventist Church picked up the kids and took them shopping. And just in time for the next day, it snowed. St. Anne's Church waived the fees for school tuition and gave the kids uniforms to start school. And the donations of money, gift cards, food, clothing, bedding, all began to arrive. Whenever there was a need, God provided. He was working miracles in the ordinary, everyday moments of our lives. And we were all giving thanks as we knew Jehovah Jireh would get us through. Next slide, Megan. Their first Christmas dinner in Canada came and presents arrived from family and friends. We had a traditional Ukrainian feast on St. Nicholas Day, a traditional Canadian turkey dinner on Christmas Day, and then we had another feast on Ukrainian Christmas. Did I mention feasts? Nadia and Lubo are amazing cooks. Almost from the day I arrived, I was never allowed back into my kitchen. There was always a pot of soup on the stove, homemade borscht, oh, incredible. And then polutsi, cabbage rolls, vereniki, pierogies, the list goes on and on. Did I mention they can cook? <laughs> Megan, I brought them here to, to youth group where they learned about our Canadian winter sport, hockey, and they were very competitive, even practicing their wrist shots in my driveway, right? Mm-hmm. Neighbors and friends took Timo and I'll stop to V's hockey games. Senya continued with her gymnastics and Artem started parkour. I was immersed in a different culture, watching and learning about their lives in Ukraine as I attempted to show them my life in Canada. Next slide. Carol Best so kindly volunteered to help with their English, English classes for the whole family. And I believe she quickly fell in love with them, just as I had. She truly has become a wonderful blessing to me and to all of them. Next slide. The moms needed incomes, and once again, the Lord provided. They got positions at the Lakeside Hotel. And the miracles just kept happening. A rental house came available for them. We set about organizing the move and they are now in their new home and starting a new journey in Canada. And they know they are not never alone. So many people have come forward from all over Penticton to support them. You have probably heard it said that it takes a village to raise a child. Well, the whole Christian community in Penticton has responded to raise these two Ukrainian families and help them to thrive in Canada. They still have hurdles to overcome. Bringing family from Ukraine, Luba's son and husband will come to join them soon. Another hurdle, learning 
and improving their English. And of course, making the biggest decision of all, when the war is over, do they stay in Canada or do they go home to their beloved Ukraine? I have no I doubt in my mind that God is with them and providing for them every step of their journey. It has been an amazing journey for me too, learning to surrender, to trust God for everything, and then get out of his way and let his will be done. So what's next for me? Megan? Well, immigrants from all over the world keep coming to Penticton, and I'm setting up my garage to provide kitchen supplies, bedding, towels, and toiletries to those who need it. And only God knows if there's another Ukrainian family in my future. I must thank all of you on behalf of Nadia and Luba and all the kids for all your prayers and support and friendship these past eight months as you have journeyed with all of us, witnessing God's unfailing love for his children. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Thank you, Lord. Jehovah Jireh, name above all names. How great is our God. Thanks, Di. Almost started crying again. Uh, just one last note. Last Wednesday, we had a barbecue. Thank you. A missions barbecue at um, the beach. Thanks for all that came. So the missions team, we made $185. And we're going to uh, Luba uh, to get her son here. Has um, they, they, got, they get a loan from a group out of Oliver that will help pay the fare and arrange the flights. So they'll look after that, but then she has to pay it back. So we're going to give her the $185 to help with that flight. And if anybody else is interested here in helping, you can give the money to Diana or I. Okay, I think that's it for missions. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>